Hi guys, my name is Tony Gray and welcome to week number seven of these weekly lessons. This week we're going to be talking about some walking baseline concepts and I just played two progressions or two cycles over the changes based on the popular standard autumn leaves. Now this is a really perfect progression to kind of talk about some of these simple concepts and there's going to be a document and an mp3 for you to download so you can practice some of these techniques and in the document there's going to be like a lesson plan analyzing this progression in detail with some of these ideas that you can implement into your own practice sessions. So the first exercise or the first way that I want you to think about these walking bass lines is to just only focus on the chord tones. Now it sounds really fundamental and, and pretty obvious and a lot of you might think well I can do that so there's no point really working on that. But I just want to point out a few things that is really important especially for a, for a bass player when walking a bass line and that's how to connect these chords together with chromatic notes but only using chord tones. So if we see the first four bars of the progression, the A minor 7 to the D7 to the G major 7 to the C major 7, we'll notice that they all move in like a cycle 5 motion. The bass line is moving in like down perfect fifths or upper perfect fourth. So for example the A to the D is upper perfect fourth or down a perfect fifth. The D to the G again same thing and the G to the C. So we can see that that's a really strong bass motion and it's very common in uh, all kinds of music you know it's a really strong kind of pull with the, with the roots so what I want you to do is try to find the notes that connect chromatically together in these cycle 5 kind of figures okay so the A minor 7 to the D I just want you to find the chord tones so A minor 7 A C E and G and what we've got to do is find the note that chromatically connects to a chord tone in D7 so D7 the chord tones are D, F sharp, A and C. Okay, so we've got to find notes in the A, C, E, G, the A minor 7 chord, that will connect chromatically to the D7. So I can see here that the G, the flattened 7th of A minor, connects chromatically to the 3rd of D. So that G to F sharp. So that's going to be a really strong line. Okay, are there any other notes here? So A, nope, C, nope, E, nope, and G is the only one. So let's continue to the G now. So again, we're going to find our chord tones for D7. And again, we're going to notice that that flattened seventh, the C, connects chromatically to the third of G. Okay, let's see if there's any more here. The F sharp connects chromatically to the root of G. Okay, so we've got two there. For a, from a dominant 7 to a major 7, there's two chromatic connectors. The flattened 7th and the 3rd. Okay, so it's really, really important that you kind of figure this out. So what maybe one thing you can do is go through the whole progression and just write out... Uh, a whole bass line only using chord tones and just really find those notes that connect together. Now in the Tony Gray Bass Academy there are tons of courses that really systematically break this stuff down but in this lesson I'm just kind of giving you an overview of some of the things to kind of look out for and that's kind of the most important thing. You know in walking bass lines you've got to think of these chords as little islands and as soon as you're getting there you want to be targeting the next one you know you want to find a way to get to the next one so really where you are is very temporary and it's always kind of where you're going next where you're going next so you, you're on a minor seven you can see d7 in the distance and it's just all about getting there in the smoothest way you know just to to kind of create like a nice smooth linear line so now I want to talk about the analysis of the progression. Now this is a really important step, especially for a bass player, as it's our job to really kind of define and map out the harmony. Now again, I keep saying this, but there are a lot of courses on fundamental harmony, on how to analyze progressions, on 
how to understand the functionality of chords in the Tony Great Bass Academy. It's something that you really should be aware of if you really want to get seriously into this stuff. But for now, for this lesson, I'm just going to kind of briefly run through this progression. There's going to be some text on the screen so you can exact see exactly what I'm talking about. And also in the document, there's going to be a detailed analysis so you can kind of take your time and, and spend more time understanding what's going on here. Okay, so the first four bars is all really coming from the key of G major. Now, the thing that's really important when analy analyzing the functionality of a tune is to kind of trust your ears. You know, your ears are going to tell you the functionality of the chord and what's going to come next. You know, you can kind of predict what's going to come next because of the chord that you're hearing. So, for example, the first three chords, the A minor 7, the D7, the G major 7, is a really kind of strong pull. They're all kind of gearing towards that G major 7 you know it's a it's a it's a build of tension and then the G major 7 is the release point you know that happens a lot with the guide tones within the chord tones themselves but again in the academy we talk about this stuff in a lot more detail so for now the first four chords are from the G major modes it's the 2 minor 7 the A minor 7 the D7 is the 5 7 the G major is the one major seven. That's the resolution. That's the home chord. That's how what we hear is home and rested. The four chord is the C major seven. So for the A minor seven, we can think of the two chord, which is Dorian. The five chord, we can think of Mixolydian. And the one chord, we can think of Ionian. And then the four chord, we can think of a Lydian sound. You know, it's got that raised fourth degree. Okay, moving on to the next few bars the f sharp minor seven flat five the b seven flat nine and then this e minor six this also is kind of a cycle five movement in the bass and it's a very common progression again it's a two five one but this time it's a minor two five one so the pull of the chords is resolving to a kind of minor tonality now these chords are borrowed from the minor modes the relative minor modes so the f sharp minor seven flat five we can look at it as like the seventh mode of the G major modes, that Locrian sound, but we're going to borrow that from the natural minor modes, the E minor modes, from the E Aeolian, if you like, and that's going to be a two chord, so that's a two minor seven flat five, and it takes it Locrian, and the five seven is a borrowed chord from harmonic minor. You know, it has that D sharp in, which is a really strong pull towards that E minor, but the D sharp is also the third of the, the B7. So we're just going to borrow this chord from the harmonic minor. And again, you know, there are a lot of information on this stuff in the academy. But for now, I'm just going to sh uh, show you the chord scale and let you just kind of sit with that and you can hear how it's all working. So if I play it here, this B7 flat 9. It's got the flat 9 and the flat 13, so it's kind of a dominant 7, flat 9, flat 13 chord. Okay, the E minor 6, I'm going to give you two options. The most common option is the Dorian for this chord, for like a 1 minor. Um, the next option is going to be from the melodic minor, so E melodic minor. Okay, I'll just play the E melodic minor for you. Okay, so again, the progression kind of repeats itself there, so there's nothing really more to analyze until we get to this kind of C section where we start to see this chromatic motion in the bass. Now, there are a lot of ways to interpret the analysis of this tune, and I'm sure some people are going to agree with me, some people are going to disagree with me, but it's really, at the end of the day, how you hear it and how you want to kind of analyze it. And also, another thing to mention as well is sometimes you're going to find the appropriate chord scales right there within the melody. Okay, so let's look at these two bars here, this E minor 7 to E flat 7 to D minor 7 to D flat 7. Now, I'm kind of hearing this as all about temporary key changes, you know, the E minor 7 to the E flat 7. Originally, you could look at this as like a 2-5 in the key of D, E minor 7 to A7, and we're just kind of using a substitute dominant to get that E flat 7, which is a common change that you can always make even though it's even if it was written as E minor 7 A7 you could always kind of play that E flat in the bass because you know the guide tones within the chord tones kind of have that same pull it's a very strong pull towards the the D chord and 
so what I'm using or what I'm thinking for these substitute dominant chords is a kind of Lydian flat seven. Again, I'm not going to really go into it too much here, but it's kind of a Lydian flat seven sound. And again, if you want more information on this, just uh, send us an email or you can also join our mailing list for the Tony Gray Bass Academy and get more information on, on the courses that we study in there. So that's a kind of temporary key change in the key of D, that E minor 7, E flat 7. And now it's resolving to a, a D minor 7, to a D flat 7. Again, I'm hearing this as a temporary key change in the key of C. It's like a 2-5 in the key of C. And what we're doing is we're just substituting that G7 for a D flat 7. And again, it's going to have that Lydian flat 7. So these are kind of temporary key changes, 2-5, two, 2-5 five, two, five, or 2 sub 5, 2 sub 5. It resolves to the C major next, which, you know, it, you can hear it as one major, but, it, you know, we're right back into the key of G here. So it's kind of a one. It's either a, a four major seven, if you like. And then we kind of go back to the B seven flat nine, which is a strong pull back to the minor tonality. So really, the bottom line is this tune is basically modulating from G major to its relative minor, E minor. And we're just using chords in here just to kind of dance around the progression but these chords happen so fast you know it's just um mainly an improviser would be just looking at these sub fives and thinking lydian flat seven lydian flat seven and that's uh, coming from the melodic minor modes okay so the exercise i want you to do over this is basically only use chord tones and passing tones. So when you use a, a, a note that's not a chord tone, I want it to be connecting two chord tones together. So again, in the document, there's a whole progression of a written bass line only using this concept. There's an analysis of it. I really want you to study that. Now I'm just going to improvise a line over one chorus only using this concept. Only chord tones, trying to connect them together chromatically and also using these diatonic passing tones but only when you're connecting two chord tones together now this is a really good exercise it's going to train your ears and it's going to give you that discipline and it's going to really kind of help you feel and hear the harmony and how it's all moving So the last thing I want to talk about harmonically here is pedal points. Now a pedal point is one note played over a series of chords that move. Now that note could be a common tone with the different chord tones or it could be a common tone within the chord scale, but it's just basically a way of kind of breaking up the harmony, adding a different color, different kind of tension to the harmony, because over jazz standards a soloist can take many many choruses. And, you know, it's just a good way of kind of breaking up the momentum or breaking up the monotony of the same old progression over and over again. You're not adding any bars or taking any bars away. What you're doing is you're just pedaling over one note over a series of chords, like I said, to add a different color and tension. Now, this is something that you might instigate or the soloist might instigate or it's just something that might just happen naturally together. But it's a really good option to use. And in the beginning example, I was doing it over a 251, which is a really good place to do it. You know, I was doing it over the minor 251, the F sharp minor 7 flat 5, B7 flat 9, E minor 6. I was pedaling on the B. It's a really good, nice way of adding tension over that 5 chord because then it resolves nicely. And over the major 251, the A minor 7, D7, G major 7, and you could even continue to the C major 7, I was pedaling over a D. So here's an example of the 251s now, and I'm again over the minor 251, 
I'm going to be pedaling on a B, and over the major 2, 5, 1, I'm going to be pedaling over a D. And you can use 2 and 4. So you can see it's a really nice way of kind of breaking up the harmony and just adding a different color. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about is right hand technique. In the beginning example, you might have noticed I was playing over the fingerboard as opposed to the pickups. And the only real reason for this is because I'm kind of looking for that kind of dead legato sound that an acoustic bass would make. It kind of makes the strings are a little less tense here. And it's just a really good place for me to do raking. And it's just a really good sound to kind of give you that warm kind of legato sound. So just kind of experiment with that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's a little bit of a long one. There's a lot of information here. But like I said, I just wanted to give you an introduction of some walking bass techniques. Again, the document is there for you to download with all of this stuff explained in detail. There's a couple of MP3s available for you to kind of practice these techniques along with. And in the Tony Gray Bass Academy, there are tons of systematic courses where we just take chunks of this information and just really get it into our playing in a nice, organic, natural way. Don't forget to join our mailing list. Don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to comment and post. And we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching.